Hello and welcome to 2021 and welcome to Sonic Lab. This is our first or certainly my first of the year. I want to say thank you very much for all of you that stuck with us through 2020. I know it was a bit of a tricky time, but today we're looking at the 1010 Music Blue Box. This little fella is a 12 channel, uh, six stereo channels, digital mixer and recorder. It's got a couple of effects units built in. It's got a mixer, it's got EQ, it's got uh, all kinds of other stuff, but it's also able to record to micro SD card as well. So we can record multiple channels and also play them back. It's built on the uh, kind of box platform, I suppose it is. And this is something they've been building out and they have some really complex and quite ambitious DSP features combined with their hardware. And this guy is the latest one and it caused a bit of a stir really because it seems to pack such a lot of digital mixer type features and recorder features into a little box. So if you're using a lot of little desktop items and you want to plug them all into a small but featured digital mixer and recorder, this could be the thing for you. So let's take a look at the rear connections. Uh, we've got power on the full size USB, which is well uh, pleasing because obviously that's not going to come out too easily and it's a bit more sturdy. Then we've got an external USB, which actually means that we can plug in class compliant USB devices. I'll show you a bit more about that. Then we've got the six stereo inputs, which are all on mini jacks. Now, the thing about these things is you really do need thin, uh, slim, connectors because if you're using anything that has a bit more substance to it it actually does get a bit tight in there and there's also no adapters supplied i using this rather splendid one that came with the poly end uh, tracker and that's great but they're very hard to find uh, on amazon i did buy a few adapters but i couldn't find one of those then we've got uh, the stereo and the main outputs output one and two and the phono output the phones outputs as well so we've got a main master output and a qmix output as well so we've got quite a lot of adaptability there so if we come round the other side we've got a micro sd card which actually it comes supplied, I think it's a 16 gig one, so that's great that they supply that. MIDI in and out on uh, the mini jack adapters, which are also supplied. Uh, I think these are standard Arturia style format. And then we've got the front panel. So this is the top of the unit. I'll just take my uh, screen protector off. It was very satisfying that. As you can see here, we've got this touch screen at the center, which allows us to access various different parameters. We've got the volume, uh, the, the pink, show what the four knobs control. So this is controlling volume one, two, three, four, and the same for gain. And we've got solo, so we can solo individual tracks, we can mute individual tracks, and we can say uh, where, what tracks we want to be in record when we go into record for SD card, including the master. So we can record actually up to 12 tracks, but I'll explain a little bit more about that in a sec. Let's just take those out of record. But essentially we have the ability to, you know, we can click and drag here, uh, that probably doesn't really make sense, but in volume we can click and drag on the touch screen or we can use the knobs or we can MIDI control some of these parameters as well. So it's actually quite flexible in how we want to use it. Uh, there are main sections. Track section means that each track shows us the sort of parameters for that track at a glance. Uh, I can name the tracks here, which uh, let's see how I do that here. Uh, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, just click on that and then you name it. We're not going to worry about that here. Also, I can configure this to have as many tracks as I want because if we go to this main page, I can, you can see I've got actually only using four tracks. So I could just go to go, I'm just going to have four tracks on this one. And there, now I've got four. But I can go up to 12 tracks. Now, why would I go up to 12 tracks, you ask? Well, this is interesting because uh, let's just go back to four tracks, make it what I can do is each of the individual tracks, because it's a stereo input, like this one. First, two, first track is stereo, which is the uh, poly end. Second track is stereo, which is the IK. Third track is the NTS, which is the Korg NTS, which is stereo as well. And then the fourth track, uh, which is the Micro Freak, is actually just one. So you can see if I was to assign it just one, it comes down the middle, oops, cancel, or left hand side. So that means basically when I'm in record, if I add a certain number of tracks, or if I add more tracks, I could have up to 12 mono inputs, 
then that enables me to record them discreetly. So I can record six stereo tracks or 12 mono tracks plus the master. So there's quite, it's quite flexible in that sense. You know, it might seem it's less so. I mean, the only thing I will say is, you know, it's quite fiddly to plug these in. I've said this before, like I've got quite a thick uh, jack plug here, but that would not fit along here. This is, this is struggling to fit between these two. It's really important that we have thin things. I don't know how many more times I can reiterate that, but it is quite critical. There's also a couple of effects generators in here, and these are actually pretty nice. I've got a delay unit uh, just running on uh, the Korg here. Got beat, we could delay, de really decent delay time. Ping pong kind of style delay. We've got beat, we can bring a filter in as well. You can get some really nice sort of regular delays, but also some really nice ambient kind of stuff. But there's also a really pleasant reverb. If I go here, these are all the uh, um, these are all the parameters for it. So we can go from from sort of regular kind of stuff to some really huge. And then freeze that. Some really, really nice kind of regular short reverbs is actually quite flexible to these massive ambient washes that I was using or I will be using when I uh, demonstrate some more tracks coming in. I think it's actually really nice and they've chosen those effects well and you know they haven't gone over the top with loads and loads of algorithms but what they have got is just got some really nice things and again these parameters can be MIDI controlled. In fact, I have, uh, I didn't want to bring this up too early, I have got the launch control and the knobs on this controlling some of the parameters, uh, which I will show you how to set up in a bit. Uh, another thing about the effects is it's possible, you've got this mode where you can have the uh, these XY pads for kind of playing with the sounds li of limited use. I think you've got level and size here and uh, delay time and filter. So you get a little bit of performative aspect to it, but it's it's not totally uh, intuitive. We've got per channel, we've got EQ, we haven't got dynamics per channel which you might expect from a digital mixer but there is a sort of compressor you can put over the master mix should you want just to keep things tamed down a little bit. So just to look, can't save presets because I mean there are some, you could get some quite tweaky things but there is another mode here, say for instance we can, we can go to a larger mode, create a high part, high cut filter and get into a bit of filtering, then just turn that off. And I could also just apply the EQ to the master and uh, again, dial in a, uh, see a high cut and play the whole track. Give myself a bit of filter finger action across the whole mix. I uh, would like to have seen presets for those EQs because they're not you know, they're, they're quite complex and they've got variable Q and variable frequency and variable curves. And so, you know, I might have something that particularly suits what I want and I've got to kind of make it every time or perhaps load it from a default project. So a bit of preset management, you know, we don't have that kind of, that, that complexity that we would have from a, a fully featured larger format digital mixer. But the thing it has got going is the fact that it's so compact and you can fit it into a small thing. I mean, I could imagine taking this and, a, a, you know, a little suitcase full of stuff, much like, you know, I've got here and kind of you could record pretty much what you want. I mean, you probably more, you'd need some more stuff like preamp if you wanted to record some vocals. But, you know, for in terms of an electronic jamming and recording system, it's looking pretty promising. So let's uh, take a look at recording something. So I come to my mixer track. Uh, I press the record button here. Uh, one thing you will find initially that you think that these correspond to these buttons, but because this is a touchscreen, it's not. Then I can just select the tracks I want to record. Let's record all four and record the master track as well. I couldn't find a way to record the effects separately, which would be really nice because they're so nice. It'd be nice to have them stemmed so we could have dry, 
plus that, but I couldn't figure that. Maybe that'll be a firmware update. Anyway, then I can come back out, go to my project settings. This is what's called uh, here. Uh, I've got a master tempo for the project. I can have a metronome. Uh, this doesn't record MIDI, but if you send it MIDI clock, it will actually uh, respond so that you can have a master clock, say, from here, and then the whole thing would be sort of synced up, which means the BPM of the delays and all of that kind of business would be happening. Anyway, I go there. I'm literally, and then all I have to do is press record. Now, I'm recording. I'm going to hit go on my synth. So now I'm just recording. Let's put... Uh, this guy in. I just go to uh, take these out of record and I go to edit and you can see I've got track listings for each of the inputs here. Now I've done multiple takes previous to this so this is the active take. If I wanted to change the active take to this one I would just do the whole thing like that. It's literally just playing back the stem that I recorded. There's no other sort of fancy editing or anything going on here uh, but it's really quite straightforward and then if I come back here, I'm out of record, I just press play and it'll start to work. But if I went into record, I could then play over the top of that, I guess. But if I do go into record, it's going to start at the beginning. There's no way of punching in or, in fact, moving the transport control fast forward and rewind. It's sort of right at the start, you would replace that individual track and then obviously if you want that level of granularity you're going to be going over to the DAW and then it's just a matter of pulling the SD card out sticking that into the DAW and grabbing it that way I don't believe this will connect uh, um, via the USB it's not an audio interface but it's no great shakes just to unplug that stick it in and then the stems are just there and they're all named as the way that you want another thing about these files is obviously when they come back in their channels, what's actually happening is it will still have the same effect sends, the same EQs, so it will sort of play back through those channels. So you could easily kind of record a bunch of tracks, then, then, then go into record again and just record a mix down of those tracks as you play back. So you've got a certain amount of kind of bouncing and capabilities of then reprocessing if you wish. Another thing that would have been really nice, obviously, is to be able to kind of maybe record loops. So you could sort of say a four bar pattern repeat, but it's literally, there's none of that stuff going on. It's really quite basic from that point of view. But bearing in mind, this thing is tiny, you know, what's it doing? It's doing quite a lot of stuff. Right, I did sort of allude briefly to uh, having this connected to this, and in fact I have. And the thing that's very cool about this is it will work as a class compliant MIDI host. So what I've actually done here is I've just got a USB cable, I've plugged it into the back of the device here. So literally, and it's powered it. And so now what's happened is that all of these knobs I've mapped up, and the way to do that is we go to edit mode and there's a little button here called learn which I hit learn and then I can come back and if I go to volume I click on the device I want and then I wiggle and you can see I do that and then I do the second one you can see the control this is a um, channel 10 I haven't actually edited these up so now back into edit come out of here so now all of my volumes are hooked up to my knobs and that's actually really nifty it seems to me not everything is there i mean like for instance i really really wanted uh, uh in the effects i've actually got some 
knobs mapped up to some of the parameters, but I really wanted to map this guy up and I couldn't find a controller for that because I want to be able to toggle freeze on and off. You know me and my freeze reverbs and it's just really nice to be able to do that, particularly when you're in a performance mode, I could just kind of hit maybe a button here, you know, maybe momentary or latching or whatever. It would have just been perfect. But I'm guessing this is the sort of thing that can be uh, added to with firmware and while I've had this there has been a firmware update to this so I'm guessing this is sort of an ongoing thing but I mean, that's to say you know it's not missing a load of stuff that it really needs these are just sort of finesses I'm actually quite impressed by this I mean it does suffer from the, the small form factor and my big my big bugbear would be great if they would just supply the cables <laughs> that came with it that would enable you to go to either mini jack or quarter inch jack inputs that would be great there's another gotcha as well because this is usb powered i've got some various usb power supplies and so all of these units here are all uh, are, are powered by usb but I can't have them all coming out of the same power because I get these kind of ground loops. So you do have to kind of figure out where your power is coming from. You can't just have one of those bricks with, you know, six or seven powers and power everything because you will end up with ground loops. And that's the thing about USB power. It's a little bit less clean and a bit more uh, less forgiving the, uh, than others so you do need to watch out for that particularly if you're trying to build yourself a compact unit you will need to think about how you're going to power it so i can't think of anything that is this compact that does what this does i mean yeah there are other units that will give you more digital mixer features i'm thinking the behringer xr18 has got 18 inputs uh, proper sort of dynamics and effects per channel uh, but it doesn't do the recording you know it works as a usb interface but if you want something that's compact that allows you to do that kind of doorless jamming i hesitate to use that phrase then this is kind of pretty much up the 1010 uh, blue box costs around 477 to 480 UK pounds uh, so it's a bit of a premium but it's also quite an unusual thing and if you're looking for something that will just kind of integrate into a very small setup this has actually got quite a lot of power I mean yeah I guess you could do iPad and audio interface but it starts to get more complicated I suppose the thing about this is it solves a problem, it allows you to record, and I think that's kind of the key feature for this. And I actually think it sounds pretty good as well, even though we've only got these kind of little mini jack inputs. On this unit, which is the uh, IK Multimedia Uno synth, it's got masses of low end, and this mixer seems to be able to handle all of that. So I, I think it sounds pretty good too, and the recordings all sound fine as well. So. One of those things, if it sort of fits your needs, then it's pretty much the only game in town. And uh, it's available now. You can buy it pretty much all good retailers. Now, I'm just going to um, play out with all the stuff that I was putting together to, for this demo, uh, which I will put on Patreon, actually. You can have the stems. I'll stick the stems up on Patreon. Uh, join us on Patreon if you feel like supporting us. Uh, the URL will scroll below. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.